Hi, I'm Melissa Raid, Chief Sustainability Officer of Sustain Life. In this video, we're going to talk about how to properly account for the emissions resulting from your employees' remote work. With a shift in remote work comes a complementary shift in emissions. What used to happen in a commercial office is now happening across decentralized houses from your remote workforce. During the height of the coronavirus pandemic, Americans spent $6 billion more on power and consumed 21% more water than in 2019. So if your company has recently switched to a remote workforce or has a significant portion of your employees in a remote setting, you'll need to account for their energy consumption to accurately complete your corporate greenhouse gas emissions profile. So where do the emissions from a remote workforce come in in your greenhouse gas inventory? It's a scope three indirect emission. Because again, employees are in your value chain and that's what scope three emissions are all about. And what goes into accounting for these emissions? We're talking about the power used for heating and cooling of the workspace, lighting and plug load for computers, printers, monitors, keyboards, etc. Now, how often do you wanna calculate these emissions? You wanna do this at least annually or anytime you have a significant change in your workforce settings. This could be if you have a big hiring spree or if you've encouraged new policies, taking your traditionally in-office working staff to a remote setting. After you calculate your emissions using tools like Sustain Life's calculators, you're gonna to wanna to move forward with policies and protocols to actually help bring that number down. This could be anything from Energy Star or EP rated equipment to at-home devices like smart plugs or smart energy meters. So if you have a remote workforce and you're putting together a comprehensive scope three greenhouse gas inventory, Come check us out at sustain.life. Thank you so much for watching.